Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Gemstone Legends video. And in this video, we are talking through the patch notes um, version 48. I don't know if the versions correspond with this patch number here, but this is the latest thing. Um, yeah, this is from Monday. Um, but yeah, pretty awesome stuff in here. I am pleased. Um, I see people that have opposite reactions sometimes, and uh, I don't really understand it. These to me seem like positive changes. If there is something that seems more negative, I will give my honest opinion on that, but uh, I haven't looked through everything in here. But the first things I saw, I was like, oh man, this is so exciting. I want to record the video for this right now. So um, we'll just jump right into it. Legends Blessing is the first thing. It is a resource that may be used at the altar. While it's active, summoning a legendary hero will show you two possible outcomes, and it will be your choice which of them you receive. So a situation like this, you can see in the upper right, uh, there was a little legend blessing symbol next to the gems up there. Used it, and you get to... So it basically gives you an extra choice. They're just giving you a lot of ways in the game to get legendaries you want. Um, unclear whether these will be purchased or whether they will be prizes. I honestly feel like it could be both, but if it's a purchase, I don't... I mean, that seems fairly reasonable. It's just giving you a way to have more choice over what you get, you know? And, um, yeah, that doesn't seem unreasonable to me. You can, cho you can choose to use it or you can choose not to use it. Um, but, yeah, that seems pretty cool. So there are a number of things that kind of give more possibilities for legendaries. There's uh, the or legendary, specific legendaries. There's the boosted altar. There are diamond scrolls. There are the different colored gold scrolls now. Um, they provide a lot of options to narrow down um, on specific heroes, and I think that's really cool. So, um, yeah, that's all we know at this point, but I, I think that's cool. This is my favorite thing that I've seen so far. So, Lucky Dice allows you to re-roll substats on the items which are upgraded to level 12 or higher. After using the dice, new substats will be randomly selected and upgraded. I don't know if it's all four or, or what, but level 12 or higher is when all four substats are visible. A player will have a choice to keep the previous substats or pick the new ones. So you can see... 16 dice in the upper left there. 2.1 billion coins, wow. Um, so, re-roll, and then you can see there the stats change. So this is probably going to be best utilized on legendary gear because those have the highest... Um, you get the most level ups on the stats. If you level up a piece of common gear, or like the green gear... You only get to um, you only get a stat increase one time, whereas legendaries all the stats are revealed to begin with, and you get four stat increases. So I'd say that's probably the best place and the ideal time you'd be doing this. Does it change the main stat too? It does not. It is a substat reroll. Yeah, that's great because uh, the ben the main benefit I see to this is around set bonuses. So say you have the hope set that you really want to use, or I don't know, any other set where you might have limited pieces. This gives you a great way to be like, man, I got the perfect main stat that I want, but the substats are crap on this, or the substats are just really not what I need for this. I see that as being the main use case, and I think that's really fantastic. Um, another possibility is you're just trying to cherry pick the best stats, but um, I don't see that being used a huge amount. Again, it's unclear where these uh, are going to be found, but the number that we're seeing is potentially reassuring because we're seeing 16, whereas the Legend Blessing, Legend's Blessing, we were only seeing one. So I don't know if that correlates with the overall rarity of these items, but I have to imagine it does to some degree. So hard to say what, where you will get these. I'm sure they will be for sale as they should be. Um, because this is an over, over the top benefit that, um, again, you can choose to decide if this feels, um, relevant to you 
or not. Um, and as always, the, the people who are buying the most things are playing against the people who are also buying the most things. You know, like player um, difficulty level tends to aggr- uh, aggregate by the, um, by the people who are, you know, trying to operate that way. If you're not operating that way, then, you know, you won't have maybe as perfect of stats or as good of heroes or any, as many awoken heroes, all that kind of stuff. And therefore, you'll be playing against players that are on your level as well. So it's totally optional, I think, to buy into these things. I don't see a reason why it has to be done. Um, okay, so hero collect- collection changes. We've increased the capacity of the hero collection by 10 slots. On top of that, the hero collection has been optimized to improve performance. What does that mean? We're working on providing the option to use heroes directly from storage. Interesting. So the storage just kind of becomes not a storage anymore if, if that's the way it's used, which is awesome. That's a big expansion on the um, the overall hero collection size. I don't understand why there are any limitations on this to begin with. Um I guess maybe once you have a bunch of players, the the amount of data that takes up letting people have an unlimited collection or something is problematic. I don't know. I don't understand that, but it, it's surprising to see it. Um, but anyways, um, that's cool. Gemstone Prime improvements. Okay, improvements sound good to me. This change is dedicated to our current and future subscribers. We increase the value of Gemstone Prime. That's already happened a couple times before, so I'd love to see that since I do subscribe to that. When it goes live, users will receive the following benefits on top of the current ones. So this doesn't read as a re Wow, something funky's going on down there. This doesn't read as a retooling where they're like, well, some things will be better, but some things will be changed, you know? Like this is just saying um, additional benefits on top of the current. So daily time rewards will be doubled. That's good. I don't know if those are the ones where like every 10 minutes or something you get something. I think that's probably what it is. Uh, training, training will provide 20% additional XP. Awesome. One free raid boss swipe available daily. That's good. That normally costs 20... 24, 27, 28 gems, I forget. Maybe it depends on the level of raid boss you're fighting against, but that's awesome. One free one per day. That's just that many more gems in your pocket. Three free market refreshes. I love that since five gems can get costly if you're doing too many refreshes. So free is good. And 40 additional hero collection slots for 200 total. That's fantastic. And you can see the changes right here. Oh, <laughs> It goes crazy after the first one. <clears throat> Daily arena chests. Three chests to open every day. So they really are trying to promote uh, activity in the arena. They made an announcement very recently about the arena champion uh, quest being changed. I think what a lot of people would do is ins- they would just not open the arena at all. And once the quest starts, then they go in the arena, they get awarded, you know somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 medals, and that bumps up their progress by a huge amount in the quest. And so they've removed that possibility because that means people are using the arena less to do well in the quest. And so they've made the amount of medals you gain more, and they've made the thresholds for the rewards lower. So I think a good change overall, one that's been a long time coming. Um, And I do think the arena is fun. So this is a... Another way of trying to get people more um, invested in that. That's also where you get hope gear, and hope gear is super good. Uh, if you watch my recent video on Celeste, I use the hope set on her. You can see the full details in that video, but uh, it's a 25% chance to gain 100 mono when using a special skill, and it goes off more often than you would think. I have gotten five special skills in a row from the hope set before. Um, Okay, so each chest will be available after a certain amount of arena fights are completed, won or lost. This will unlock after 3, 6, and 10 battles. Each of the chests has a specific kind of reward assigned. For three fights, you'll be able to open a chest 
containing potions, six fights, scrolls, or scroll shards, and it sounds like a random drop chance for what's in there, which is cool. Ten fights, a random artifact. The quality of reward will increase with leagues, so they're incentivizing you to climb higher. The higher you climb, the better rewards. Um, this includes a chance for six-star legendary artifacts and diamond scroll shards in the highest leagues. I don't love that aspect because it's really hard to stay in the top leagues, maybe as it should be, but it fe that this one feels a little bit like the people who don't need these things as much will be getting them most you know so this uh, we'll have to see how it works out and what's actually you know how good the rewards actually are a uh, random gear could easily be like boots with a non percent main stat which is like okay i'm just gonna sell these so um yeah don't i don't love that aspect but we also don't know how much it's going to change based on the particular leagues. So it's possible that um, as you increase leagues, the changes are not like, um, you know, crazy big improvements or anything like that. Like it's possible they're closer together than they might be making it sound. But you can see the chest there of how many battles. So win or lose, that's pretty good. Um, and you get five... Uh, battles from your daily quests for completing the five summons, which you can just use bronze scrolls for and uh, very easy to do. So just more rewards. Um, take it or leave it. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, and you'll be right where you currently are. If you want to do this and you already use the arena, this just gives you the chance at something better. It's kind of like, um, <clears throat> I think this is even better than the example I'm about to give, but it's kind of like having a credit card with um, cash back on it, where it's like, you don't have to use that. You can use whatever you're currently using, but when you do use that, you just get extra stuff, you know? And after a certain period of time, you have a free, uh, free gift, if you will. <clears throat> okay. Guild Wars. On our path to improving the Guild Wars experience, which they've put a lot of work into, we're introducing a few small changes in the current patch. We've put some additional effort to ensure a smooth start for all the guilds. That includes fixes for problems, um, f reported problems of some of our most active guilds. Above the fight button in the Guild Wars location, above the fight button, there will be info on how many points exactly the player will receive after defeating an enemy. This will include points for win streak. Whoa, there's streaks in wars now. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, who are these heroes? Oh, that's just the dragon. I was like, who's this dragon hero? Um, interesting. Win streak. And will take into account defeated enemies. With the recent matchmaking changes, some guilds have pointed out that the difference in power between guilds from the same league may be significant. The goal of ranking and leagues is to prove is to prove and show your opponents that you are not in your place by mistake. It takes effort and dedication to climb. For this reason, we're introducing a limit we're introducing a limit of available spots. This is <laughs> I'm confused by this. For this reason, we're introducing a limit of available spots in the top three leagues. What does that mean? This points limit will still be mandatory to access Platinum, Diamond, and Challenger leagues. In this situation, when more guilds reach the points limits, the only way to change league will be by dethroning an opponent who is higher in the ranking and is currently occupying the spot. Oh. So... It's not a threshold. Challenger can only be 10 teams. Um, and the limits are only Challenger, Diamond, and Platinum. So that, I think that does incentivize people. It might have a, an impact on the kind of loot people are able to get. It, I don't know how many people are currently in Challenger, Diamond, or Platinum, but I imagine this is shrinking it to some degree. Um, I wouldn't expect by a large degree but shrinking it by some degree which means 
loot is impacted, but it's, it's very randomized anyways, whether you get a red chest or not. So I doubt the overall um, outcome of this is going to be uh, bad. But I, it's hard to... This one I don't quite know. So with all these things, let me know your thoughts in the comments, how you think this is going to play out, if you have a difference of opinion on these kinds of changes. Um, but I'm, I'm doing my best to give my full honest take on what I'm reading. <clears throat> all right. Guild Wars chat will be divided into two tabs, one for allies only and another for opponents. I, I do like that. So you can have war specific conversations, uh, conversations going, and you don't either have to share that with your opponents by mistake or clog up the main chat. Um, it does make for more to keep up with, but I think that level of organization is ultimately a good thing. Um, it's not more to keep up with, actually. It's just in different places. You know, the amount of conversation will stay the same. It'll just be better organized. Chat will also be available before the war phase starts and a few minutes after it's finished, so you have time to show some appreciation to the opposite guild after the fight ends. This change was asked for by players to better communicate during Guild Wars while maintaining communication in the guild chat free from strategy discussions. I think that's a really great idea. And this is the kind of stuff that I think is so great. Like, there's just simple... They do a lot of quality of life improvements that, uh, you know, this takes time and testing. And yes, it's requested by players, but as we know from Empires and Puzzles, so many things that people are like, please do not do this. It just happens anyways, you know? So this, this to me shows not only just a willingness to listen to players, but they're spending money based on what players want to see, which is, um, which is kind of unusual. So that's awesome. Uh, announcement chat. Global chat will also be divided into two tabs, general and announcement. Uh, the goal is, the goal of the announcement chat is to free the general chat from ads interrupting conversations. I think that's fantastic. People just go in the general chat and spam guild stuff, use my code, etc., etc. Um, so I think, uh, dividing that is also a good thing because it's just, it's just organizing things. And I think that is how it should be. People will still probably spam the general chat, but I wonder if they'll have some filters set up or something. All right, ignoring. Our goal is to give players as much freedom in the chat as possible while ensuring the environment free from profanity. Since the chat connects people from different parts of the world, of different cultures and habits, there may be a situation where you don't get along with someone. We would give you the choice to not listen to another person <clears throat> against your will and have an option to block. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, probably a long time coming, but good to have it. You have the option, the function will prevent you from seeing their messages. Don't worry, you can unblock them if you choose to do so. Gemstone Legends is growing with each year, and so is the need to access knowledge about the game. We've restructured the library so it is easier to navigate. That is fantastic and more intuitive. Um, not to always be contrasting this with, um, with Empires and Puzzles, but in Empires and Puzzles, you don't have access to this. You have to use third-party tools, and people are creating all this extra stuff so that they can learn about the game. Like, imagine if they had this in Empires and Puzzles where you could click on it and see every hero in the game. They created the library in Empires and Puzzles, but it only shows you the heroes that you already have. So I really love how much, uh, how many resources are given um, just to improve people's access to um, understanding the game. I think this is very positive. Um, okay, we've also updated the old articles and added new ones, all for old and new players to enjoy browsing through. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it makes sense. So this is good. Bug fixes. Okay, we're at the bottom here. Multiple heroes with passive abilities resurrecting allies once per turn won't burn each other's passive abilities. It will be possible to use two Nefries in one team and both will use their passives once per turn. Yeah, so there was this unfortunate redundant overlapping where if you had three Nefries on your team, for example and one hero dies, I'm pretty sure what used to happen is all three of them would burn their passive at the same time. And so they've added some sophistication um, so that that doesn't happen, which is cool because that unlocks more possibilities. Or heroes like, I think Nefri and, um, what's his name, Akuma together, <clears throat> the first time he would die, 
he would get revived by Nefri first, and then I think the second time he died, he would uh, get his invincibility uh, as he's supposed to do. So that is awesome. Fix the bug when using special ability multiple times in a row in a short period was blocking the mana bar in full. Okay, so a problem that didn't used to be possible maybe now that the hope set is there and this other stuff. Um, Board King and Board Jester will work in the same turn. Until now, they had to be applied or dispelled before the turn to take effect. From now on, Cleansing Board Jester will provide one additional move in the current turn as well as applying Board King. Okay, that just sounds like a overall um, intelligent fix. Free Daily Bronze Scroll and Weekly Scroll were removed from the lobby and will be available through the offer window. Okay, that's trying to get you to check out the offers more frequently. So um, ultimately a, a completely neg negligible change in my opinion. We've changed the sorting order in the Hero Shards tab. The latest heroes will end up on the top and you'll be notified when you have shards available. Awesome. All slots for potions will be unlocked. What I... Uh, hold on. All slots for potions and elixirs will be unlocked from the beginning of the player's journey through the world. Uh, maybe you didn't used to be able to equip them all. Uh, new sounds added. That's great. Uh, the thing I really want to see is team slots. Please add team slots. Um, because, like, yeah, just, so you, could, you could either load up all your different raid boss teams or, or whatever. Just a way to have more than one team equipped so you don't have to build them from memory or write them down somewhere. We really need to see that. But New Sounds is awesome. There were a bunch of heroes who had really detailed visual animations but had no sounds. And so uh, they're, they're slowly, I think, trying to try to fix that. So that's cool. That just adds some richness to the game. Fix a bug when awakening stars and power were incorrectly displayed. Okay, I haven't seen that before. Keep in mind that some of the features will be visible immediately and some will be unlocked. Yeah, some of these uh, don't happen until every single player has, until the update is forced. Every player has to update to, to enter the game. But let me know your thoughts. I feel very largely positive about these as I do with many of the updates. I just think I, I feel a difference in the way that players are interacted with and the way their suggestions are incorporated. That's not to say they, they, they uh, incorporate every single suggestion, but that's not something that I would ever expect to be the case. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, as always, if you're not playing the game currently and you're interested, download links in the description. Using one of those links, as opposed to just going to the App Store, will give you a free $50 starter bonus. So make sure to download from the links in the description of the video. Um, that's it. Thoughts in the comments, please hit the like button and subscribe. Show your support for the channel. Help me uh, keep the motivation to keep doing these videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.